Hey, my lovelies. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, I am still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. You should hopefully be watching me in black and white. And, as you would have been able to tell from the title, the thumbnail, and if you've read any of it, the description, today I'm playing with the Lunar Beauty Moonspell Volume 2 palette, which was of course a wonderful birthday gift from my lovely friend Kay. So, if you want to see exactly how well or how badly this particular lovely behaved and of course what this looks like in glorious Technicolor then Sammy the Straw is on holiday today so I've got my festive coffee cup And I'm nearly out, which means I need to go and get another drink. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies. Okay, I am back from the intro. I will have shown you this. In the intro, this is, if you've seen my haul video with this in it, um, my lovely, wonderful friend Kay sent me this. This is my belated birthday present. She was going to get me the uh, Flight Club from Menagerie, but it kept going out of stock, and then she wasn't getting the notifications when it was coming back into stock, and in the end she's like, Do you know what, I'm done. Please pick something different that you'd like for your birthday. <laughs> So, I chose this because obviously I've got Moonspell 1, absolutely love it. This is the same kind of format, so it looks like a book on a shelf with the cardboard slip cover and then this gorgeous sort of palmistry thing on the front. Um, the moon's faces of the moon on the back. All the info of Luna Beauty on the back and gold leafing around the side and this sort of gold plating, gold leafing on the front to make it look as if it is actually a book. And if you look, hopefully that's pick that up. It actually does there's there's texture on there to make it look like there are pages. There we go. So this as with the first moon spell lovely mirror hello 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 uh, but this is slightly larger in that moon spell one was three rows of five so we had 15 this has got the extra row so we've got the 20 shades this time I kind of wish they were the same size because of storing them and lining them up and I really hope that Moonspell 3 isn't going to have another row and another row and, and then we end up with a Morphe size palette. Um, this is about as big really as I'm comfortable with now when it comes to palettes. But I cannot wait to start playing with this. Um, as always, this remains a teaching channel. So by virtue of a said teaching channel, um, I go in very, very close when I am doing the tutorial so that you can see exactly what's going on. It's literally just my eyes on screen. Now because of that obviously when I'm looking down to either add more pigment to the brush or clean the brush, changing colours etc. There are occasions when all you see is my wonderful widow's peak here. Sexy hairline. Uh, but that's a 
small price to pay for being able to see what's going on because if you're like me you watch everything on your phone if you're 47 like me you have to hold the phone slightly further away than you're used to to be able to focus on it only about an inch or so further away at the moment but uh, that inch is enough for me to go reading so um, I zoom in very close I'm also going to zoom in, I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded eyes. Now, I see so many people, even the really big experienced beauty gurus, say they've got hooded lids when in actuality what they've got are deep set lids. Now, I can understand the confusion because the way that shadows wear on those lid types, very, very similar. But in order to get the most longevity and the best wear time possible from the shadows, they do need to be applied slightly differently depending on your eye type. So the clip will be just my eyes on screen and I'm going to talk you through really simply how to tell the difference between the two eye types and then how best to apply shadows for whichever eye type you have. Once that is done, I will be back to play with this palette here, which as you can tell, I am dying to get my brush into. Um, and while I'm playing with the palette, I will also update you on where the heck I've been the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, here's the clip. I'll see you at the other side of it. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over mm -hmm with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. 
If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am uh, back. Okay. <sighs> Do the dark circles show you how little sleep I'm getting lately? Yeah. Okay. I am going to start off with not the brush that I've just picked up. I just picked up completely the wrong brush. Well done, bomber. Nice start. Let's try that again. Right. This is um, rather an old spectrum brush. It's been through the wars. Uh, doesn't give me the name on it, unfortunately, which is rather frustrating, but it is a standard fluffy brush because whatever the width of the brush head that's how far it's going to blend your shadow out so if you have smaller lids than me you may want to start off with something a little bit more I mean that's obviously to the extreme um, that's the sort of size I go into when I'm doing corner work here um, but obviously you can go down to a size suitable for your eyes. Now, oh there's so much play within here I don't know where to start. Um, I'm, I do know where I'm going to start. As always I'm going to start with the purples because if there's a purple or a green in a palette you know I'm going to go for it. Partly because it's one of the most difficult shades to create. So if the purples work well then the pinks, the corals and the reds should also work well. So, I'm going to dip into Macy, which is the dark purple on the bottom row. Bit of kick up to that. As you can see, just tap back off into the pan. I don't mind kick up. Um, I do my foundation afterwards anyway and uh, you know you can you can dip back in to the shade to pick up more colour for the rest of the eye or going into the other eye. Now hold the brush at the very end if the brush handle is long enough rest it against the inside of your hand there just to give you some stability so I don't wave about too much at this end. I always do the Viennese Waltz blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a fleckled when we get there, and a reverse turn to come back again, rather than relying on the windscreen wiper. The reason I do this is because I'm 47 years old, I've lost over 200 pounds in weight, the skin on my eyelids moves. I know slim teenagers that have the same issue, so it can just be genetic. But if the skin on your eyelids moves and you're only doing the windscreen wiper, you're going to end up with the lid folding over on itself and that's when you get the white 
stripes which is a dead giveaway so enough chatting time to start playing I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brows I'm going to start about here and just start applying this shadow a little bit of um, powder flying up in the air but uh, it's going on okay it's not doesn't seem to be patching or clinging anywhere so that's good um, I would rather when it's a shadow like this that it goes on a little bit um, less opaque so that you can actually build the colour up yourself it's much friendlier for beginners as well but this is going on really quite nicely I'm just going to come down onto the outer sort of third or so of my mobile lid can't see a damn thing because obviously that's the eye that I'm blind in so when I close this one it really is the blind lead in the blind folks I rely on muscle memory to uh, stay in focus and stay on screen now this is actually applying quite nicely it did look like it was starting to patch a bit here but I think it was just where I'd overworked the amount of pigment I'd picked up and just needed to pick up a bit more pigment as you can see once I did that it's going on absolutely fine it's next door moving their table so where have I been the last couple of weeks wow long story uh, where shall I start let's start with the dentist now I told you about my sort of the lovely bouncy chair and the up and the down and the up and the down and the up and the down and the come back another time well I went back the rearranged appointment and uh, I was so nervous by the time I'd got there that the same thing was going to happen again um, I sat in the chair and I was absolutely rigid I couldn't even sit back in the chair I was just bolt upright um, and the dentist looked at me and she went even if we can get this chair working this week you're not going to let me do anything in your mouth she said you're far too nervous I'm going to have to refer you to a dentist that does um, sedation for very nervous patients so I'm going to have to refer you back so I'm like well how long is that going to take I don't know great thanks so I still have the issue of broken teeth in my mouth because of fillings falling out during lockdown and then obviously the tooth being destabilised and snapping off And with it being lockdown, like 2020 lockdown, no dentists were doing any work at all, not even emergency work. So, I'm now at the stage where I had found myself an NHS dentist, and trust me, that is like pulling hen's teeth. But now I haven't because they're saying they don't want to treat me because I'm too nervous. Right. Okay. So now I've got to wait until there's an NHS dentist somewhere near me. Bearing in mind the one that I was travelling to was like 12 miles from my house. 
Um, yeah, so I've now got to wait until there's a dentist that specialises in sedation on the NHS, somewhere near me, having a vacancy. I can see me being a toothless by the time that happens. But I will keep you updated on my continuing saga. Honestly, it's like bloody Star Trek, their five year mission. That's what it started out as, wasn't it? Oh, I'm showing my age. And my geekiness. And I don't care. Right. You can see it's looking like it's patching just here. I do get that a lot just there on both eyes. Uh, because I do get dry patches just there on my eyelid. If that happens with you, get all the, the blending done that you want around the edges and then just pat, pick up some extra pigment on the brush and just pat it into place and just move the brush around while you're patting it and that will help with building up the shadow, but that's going to be in my crease anyway, so it's not really going to be noticeable. But as I said, I think that's more my eye issues than the actual um, shade itself. Right, I'm going to clean this off on a, a microfiber cloth. Sorry folks, it's always the way in it. The phone's been silent all day the minute I sit down to film. Notification after notification after notification. Sales call after sales call after sales call. Maybe I should put do not disturb on. That might be an idea. see if that shuts you up shall we? Um, yeah I use a microfiber cloth to change the colours on my brush because I have found that colour switches are too harsh on the bristles especially natural brushes I mean I'm using synthetic today but I much prefer a microfiber cloth you can use this you can use a old bit of rag old tea towel I've even been known to use my short legs if they're due to go into the wash later that day. Right, I am now going to go into hmm. I think I'm going to go into Maggie, which is like a more of a burgundy, purpley red. Oh, I'm just gonna pop some of that on in a part here. I like to start off with blending the two together before I actually continue along because I don't know why, whether it's just me and I find or I feel that it blends easier when I do that rather than um, doing this and then trying to blend it afterwards. Let's see if this colour will build up like the purple did. It's not as deep as it is in the pan at the moment anyway. I don't mind because it's quite a pretty colour but it's not although on camera it does look as if it's that deep. Okay, so, the continuing saga of where I've been for the last couple of weeks. Um, long term viewers will know that I have cellulitis on both of my legs with 
where it was so long that I could, the doctors weren't having people into the surgery at all. And then when they were having limited visits in the surgery, the only door they had open was around the front left side of the building. And I would have to park around the middle of the back of the building. I just physically couldn't get all the way around there with my disability. So I ended up with um, the small ulcers became larger ulcers. Because obviously I've also got um, lymphedema in both my calves which oof, I didn't have it until the GP put me on to he tried me on gabapentin first I know it's an epilepsy medication but it's also used for people with chronic pain because it blocks the pain receptors in the brain so your body's still feeling the pain but the brain doesn't understand that it's a pain signal um, but the gabapentin was uh, <laughs> making my hair fall out and the Sinead O'Connor uh, was not particularly the look I was going for and not pretty enough to do Sinead O'Connor or Skank and Nancy and wigs are too hot to wear it's bad enough with your natural hair so, um, I really like that colour. Sorry, leather on the way. So then he put me on to, took me off of the gabapentin and put me on progabalin, which again, different epilepsy drug, but it blocked the pain receptors in the brain. And literally within 10 days of being on progabalin, both my legs swelled up ridiculously um, and I'd, as I said I'd not had lymphedema prior to that at all I used to get swollen feet and ankles with my fibro but that was just that was muscle swelling rather than um, edema or water retention in the legs I'm just going to go down to a slightly smaller blending brush. Let's try one of these new ones that I got from Cosmic Brushes with the glitter in the handles. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Um, so I'm going to go for a smaller, because I just want to do something across the top here to pull those two colours together, and I think I'm going to go into the shade called Alex, which is a light, sort of pinky, mauvey shade. And I'm just going to use that just to buff these edges out and just soften that top line there a little bit yeah so literally within like 10 days I, I suddenly had this lymphedema in my legs and uh, getting out of the car at my mother-in-law's she planted some weird plant down her drive that got all overgrown. She's got quite a narrow drive because she's got a narrow car. I've got a wider car than she has. I've got a family sized car. So of course as I got out, this flower, weed, whatever the hell it was, wrapped around my leg. Um, and it was an allergic reaction to that that actually caused the first ulcer. So, deep joy. And then the ulcer became the cellulitis, yada yada yada, which was exacerbated, but marvellous, huh? But, um, so I've, I've now been, I've now started to open 
the doors by the disabled parking so I can now get in and actually see the nurses and get them to look at it. I mean, they said that, you know, Chris and I had done a really good job of keeping it under control and not um, letting the ulcers get too deep, etc. But that all the while I had the lymphedema in my legs. Can you see the difference there where I've just blended that edge out compared to this one which looks quite raw? Okay, good. Um, they said that me, you know, Chris and I had done really well keeping it under control for, you know, the 18 months that we just couldn't physically get into the doctors. Um, but that all the while, because of the lymphedema, which is, um, it's, it's water retention in sort of the muscles and the cells of the leg. Because of that, because there were openings, as in the ulcers, that was giving this liquid somewhere to escape to. And all the while, the wounds were wet and leaking because we were having to change the pads every day on them, the amount of liquid coming out of them. The ulcers will never heal up because they have to be dry to heal. And the lymphedema clinic won't touch me all the while I've got an open wound. So, um, the nurse arranged for a tissue specialist, a tissue viability nurse, to come down. I'm just going to clean this brush. Tissue viability nurse to come down and properly assess the legs and give her opinion on what the next step should be. And she said, um, we'd look at doing wraps from toe to thigh. So a foot wrap, then a calf wrap, a knee wrap, and a thigh wrap. To force the lymphedema back up the legs so that the ulcers can heal up. Because once the ulcers can heal up, I can be referred to the lymphedema clinic. Um, right, I'm going down to a very, very small brush now. This is one that I actually got in one of my rocker boxes. This is the My Kitco Pro uh, 1.20 Precise Crease Brush. And you can see it really is teeny weeny. And I'm going to go into the black in the palette, which is actually is one of the blacks that has glitter in it. I don't know if you can, if that'll pick up on camera. I'm hoping that is actually showing up. But there's sort of gold and sort of corally toned, coppery toned um, mica or glitter parts in it. Um, now I know a lot of companies do that to make it easier to blend so let's see whether when we blend this we lose all the glitter. We might do because I'm using a very tiny brush. If you have created your own crease this is the point that you now follow the new line that you've made because this is the darkest shade we're going to be using. Dark colours go back, light colours come forward so by putting the deepest colour through the crease line it gives the impression that that bit of the eye is tucked further back and will help complete the illusion of I have a crease line here whether you do or you don't. Okay. So again, I'm just going to start on this outer corner here, and initially just circles on that outer corner there. Yeah, so the nurse ordered all of these wrappings for me, and got into 
the surgery where the minister said, right, we're not going to... I had visions of coming out of the surgery looking like an Egyptian mummy from the waist down. <laughs> Literally. Um, but she said, we're going to start you off slowly because she's aware that with my fibre I get a lot of, of pain. I get peripheral neuropathy in both legs, which means that the slightest, lightest touch hurts. Uh, imagine sunburn on gravel rash and then every time someone touches you they're doing it with a salt covered cheese grater that's how sensitive my legs are uh, so you can imagine how sensitive they've been with constantly having had tight bandages on them to try and keep these pads in place the last 18 months uh, it's been excruciating it really has it's one of the reasons why You've not seen as many films from me this year because I've just physically been in too much pain to even think about putting makeup on. It hasn't stopped the purchasing of the makeup, which is frustrating because I've now got all these wonderful palettes I want to play with that I need to play catch up with, but I don't want to play with off camera I want to wait until I'm filming with them so you can see my first impressions too. Right I'm just going to run this through about two thirds of the crease just slightly past where we blended these two together and I'm really only picking up the slightest little bit of powder when I'm doing this because I really want to control how far this goes up the eye and again I'm just going to do my little fake wing out the side here I'll be tidying this up in a minute with some micellar water I may or may not remember to show you that part can you see the difference between the two eyes where this now has the depth of that the perspective looks as if this eye is deeper than this one? Just I hope you can. So yeah, um she said we're not gonna put you completely into it straight away because obviously we're aware of the pain. So we're gonna start you off with totally on your right leg that has the two ulcers on it. So, um, I've had that on two weeks now, and I have to tighten it a number of times during the day because obviously it's forcing the lymphedema up the leg, so then the strapping gets loose and falls down, so it has to be tightened and tightened and tightened and tightened, which I can't do when Chris isn't here because I, I physically can't bend my back that far to get down there. Uh, I've been spending most of the days with my, you know, laid on the sofa with my legs up over the arm of the sofa to try and encourage the lymphedema to, to come up the leg and even when the strapping's not super tight to stay up the leg and not go back down again. So that's why you've not seen very much of me lately and I do apologise. I know how frustrating it is when creators that I follow suddenly just sort of disappear for weeks on end without any explanation. Um, and I do appreciate those of you that are understanding and being patient with me and still sticking with it. I do appreciate every single one of you. You all mean the world to me on your day. For some days in my depression, knowing I need to get up and film, pretty much the only thing that gets me out of bed. 
So yeah, that's that's why you've not seen me, because for the past two weeks I've really been struggling. Um, it's meant to be back over there today to get the left leg done from knee to the foot to knee. And unfortunately the, uh, the wrappings haven't arrived with me yet so I thought there was no point going into the surgery just for her to you know, take the dressing off, have a look at it and go, oh yeah, you're doing really well, and put it back on again. That's wasting her time, wasting my time. And the thing is, it's... I don't think they realise quite how... how much it takes it out of me to physically get into the car, drive you know, to the surgery, get out of the car, get into the surgery, get through the reception, get into the lift, get up the stairs, down the corridor. I know it sounds daft, but when you're in chronic pain and every single step is agony, it's, it's not easy folks. I wouldn't wish it's on my worst enemy, I really wouldn't. I like this brush. For those of you who are wondering, I did say I'd give you an update in my next rocker box, which I need to film. I'll see if I can film it after this. See how much pain I'm in. But I really like this little brush. This is going to come in very useful. I can see me using that quite a bit. Right, this is a clean pad with my cellar water on. The current micellar water of choice, for me at least, is this Garnier one with rose water. I am very much liking that. And what I'm going to do with this is just fold the corner over as I get straight bit, and then run along under the lower lash line, and then pressing slightly firmer straight line out to the eyebrow and then just tidy it up a little bit now yes I could have used tape but if the tape is sticky enough to stop powder going under the edge of it when you are blending then it's going to pull at this delicate skin around your eyes when you are removing it. And uh, that's one of my rules you don't break is that you don't pull the skin around your eye any more than you have to. Having said that, you are going to see me having to pull my eye around, but I will explain more when I get to that point. Now, the shimmers in this palette, you can see some of them don't have a lot of base pigment to them because they are designed to be more of a topper. Particularly this, this first white one here, which you can barely see against my skin tone. So what I'm going to do, normally the first time I use a palette, I put the shimmers on just on the um, eye primer that I use, which obviously is my chrome pebble. But, because Manny has said that these are designed to be topper style, I am just looking for my glitter glue. Um, I am back. I genuinely have no idea where I 
put my NYX glitter glue. Fortunately, however, I do have this one from the Gypsy Shrine, which is Peel Off Glitter Glue. I haven't used this for a while, so I hope it's still okay. Oh. Let's just squeeze some of this out. Onto my little phone case with the Pokemon on it. Now, I am going to use a nail art brush. Can you focus please, camera? Do your job, come on. Because it goes nice and flat. You see? I'm just going to grab a mirror so I can see what I'm doing because you are quite a long way off. And I'm just going to pick up some of this glitter glue and just pop this onto middle two thirds of my mobile lid and then I'm going to grab a nice flat brush like this Voldemorphy one and I am going to go into Luna. And this is really quite a crumbly shade. So I'm going to pick that up on the brush. And I'm just going to press this onto. the glue. Just wipe it off on there. I pick up some more. You don't have to use glitter glue but I wanted the um, I wanted to use this particular shade and I didn't want to have to spend all night building it up. Hence why I used the glitter glue. That is super pretty. And then grabbing my brush again. Now with this eye this is the eye that I have to break my rule with. See these super deep creases here? Well, because of those, I have to gently stretch my lid out because otherwise what happens is the pigment ends up going into those creases. But it goes in loosely, it doesn't pack on properly and then I end up with it cascading down my face during the day which is really painful especially when it gets in my eye but you can see I'm only pulling it out just far enough to straighten out the creases and then I'm gently letting go and putting the eye back I'm not just letting it spring back any old hell. Now, same thing with applying this pigment. I'm just applying it as quickly as I can to this area making sure it's all adhered and then gently letting go and then the rest of the eye I'll just do the same way that I did this one I 
that's always a good tip for you if you don't want to use your fingers to apply shimmers or glitters or any kind of reflective pigment like this where well, obviously we all know applying it with your finger gives you the best usually result but if you're like me and you don't like using your finger to do that because you want more precision or like you know back in the day when I had stiletto nails I didn't want to poke my eyeball out pop in some glitter glue down is a great way of increasing the reflection from the pigment without the need for using your finger or wetting the pigment which obviously is what I, know I normally do right I am super happy with that so far so I'm going to clean these brushes off and I'm going to disappear off and put foundation and other bits and bobs on my face and once I have done that I will return to you to finish off doing this eye look so I now have a bit of a wait before I can chat to you again but for you my darlings I promise it'll be just the other side of this Blah, 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 blah. Bit. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Hey lovelies. Okay, I am back. I have just finished using my Pink Honey Soap Brow to um, brush these little things up into place. Just going to clean the soap off of the spoolie. So it's not too key for the next time I use it. Again, microfiber cloth to the rescue. Um, I used my usual physician's formula butter bronzer, but I do have Manny's um, blush palette, the Moon Prism blush, and I used Stargazer, this one for my blush today. Right, now, the way that I do my brows, because I'm always asked this still, how I get them to match so well, is that I don't search for coloured pomades anymore. I brush them up into place using either soap gel or the Colourpop Clear Wax soap holds them much better you don't have to buy a specific soap gel you can just use a spoolie and an ordinary bar of soap uh, but I like having the little pot of it and then once you have brushed them up into place while they're still a little bit soft and tacky you then get your angled brush and I am going to dip into, uh, what kind of to dip into, that's a very good question. I think this purple that I used, Macy. And then all I do is start applying that to the brow as you would do a pomade or brow powder and because you're applying powder to the brow because the brow is still a little bit sticky it grabs the powder really nicely so they don't tend to fade during the day but also the powder acts as like a, a, well, a setting powder effectively and 
and uh, it helps to set the brows into the shape you want. And this way your brows will always match whatever eyeshadow look you've done. Because you're using the same eyeshadow to finish the brows. See? I tried it one day as an experiment because um, I didn't have a green brow pomade. I had a blue and I had a yellow pot eyeliner. I tried mixing those two together but it just sort of faded through the day because the eyeliner wasn't designed to go on brows obviously. Um, and at the time I was using the Resolute Resolu <laughs> Time I was using the Revolution pomades, but I noticed that the colours were going out of stock and they weren't coming back into stock. And I thought, oh, I wonder if they're improving the formula or changing the packaging or putting it under a different line. Because let's face it, they've got about a million different bloody company names. I heart Revolution, Revolution Makeup, Triple uh, X or Double X Revolution, Revolution Pro, Revolution Hair, Revolution Skin. Right, I'll just clean that brush off, pop it back over in the little drawer over here. And then I am going to get. A nice flat chunky brush like so and that's what I'm going to use to do the under eye but yeah it was just an experiment that I did one day off camera and it worked and it lasted some that right that's what I'm going to do from now on then right now do I want to continue with the same colours or do I want to pop something different on the water on the bottom line? Lash line, that's a very, very good question. I think I'll stick with the purples, but I used Macy, Maggie, Hilda and Alex so far. So I think I will lightly dip into Queenie. I've got a friend called Queenie. And just tap that back off and just touch it briefly on the microfiber cloth to get as much off of as possible. And I'm just gonna put that really, really close to the lash line. Going about halfway along, I suppose. Same thing this side. I always wince more this side because I've only got sort of muscle memory and a rather too far away for comfort viewfinder. Regular viewers will um, confirm how many times I've poked myself in the eye doing this. And then I'm going to get myself a blending brush like so and I'm gonna dip into Jillian mm, I've got a cousin called Jillian they don't get on and I'm just gonna use that to smudge Queenie and continue along towards 
Det er noget cool nok. See at the moment I'm kind of I only look like an Egyptian mummy from the knee down on the right hand side. <coughs> but if it works and it means I can start getting my legs out again, that would be nice. Hmm. I like that. Why oh, do I always get an itchy nose just when I'm finished doing my makeup? Always the way. Always, always the blasted way. Right. This is a little lip brush that I have had probably over a decade now, if I'm honest. I'm just going to dip into Agatha. The, uh, my, the white shimmery shade that doesn't have a lot of base pigment. I'm just going to pop that just under the tail of my brow. Each side just to lift it slightly. And I think I'm going to want a purpley highlight, so I'm going to get my Lethal Cosmetics Scatter highlight, she looks like this. And I'm going to pop her just on the inner corner there. like sale. Right, my darlings. That is the eye look, apart from the mascara, etc. done. So I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some more, some of this highlight on my cheeks because I'm not looking like a glitter ball yet. Uh, put some mascara on put a lippy on. Now my friend Kay did get me the liquid lipstick Hallows Eve but that's more of an orangey like a pumpkin-y orange so I don't think that's going to work with this particular eye look so I'm going to use I might try one of the new Sephora lippies that I bought recently yep, I showed you my last haul Anyway, I'm going to finish all of that lot and I will come back once again for you. Instant. Hey lovelies, this is me, I am back. Oh dear, okay. For those of you who like to know what else I've used on my face, um, I use the Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator. I'm in shade 20 Fair, if you're wondering. Uh, I used the Catrice True Skin Hydrating uh, High Coverage Hyaluronic Acid Waterproof Concealer under my eyes in 002 Neutral Ivory. Um, as I said earlier, Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, the blush from Manny's palette, the scatter highlighter from Lethal Cosmetics. The Lippy is one of the Sephora ones. This is a Cozy, which the picture for which is a pair of gloved hands holding a, a heart of snow. I just thought it picked up really nicely on the, the burgundy in here. The mascara today is the um, Essence Lash Princess 
in the orange option and I, I'm trying out a different setting spray today not my usual Gerard I'm trying out this e.l.f. stay all night micro fine setting mist apparently this is a dupe for the Urban Decay All Nighter but it's not as drying so I will see I will try it and I will get back to you and I will let you know but what we're talking about today is this beautiful wonderful thing so I used one two three four five six seven eight of the shades from here I wish you wouldn't do this reflective packaging it's so difficult to show you the colours accurate it's about as accurate as I'm going to get them um, I really like what I've used so far it certainly seems to be to the same quality as the original Moonspell palette which I'm really happy with um, I have got his original Life's a Drag palette that's not as good quality as these um, this is much much better quality uh, I have got his Strawberry Dreams palette on the way to me I bought that on Depop this morning while I was in pain <coughs> um, but yeah so far I am absolutely loving this I am so so thankful to Kay for getting it for me for my birthday um, and I cannot wait to have a play with the rest of these shades. I might do a coral one next, a corally, pinky, orangey, warm toned coming out of fall option next time. And there are one, two, kind of three, and this one here. You could probably pull a neutral look out of this as well. So, I know I don't do neutral looks very often, but if you want to see me try and do a neutral look with this, you know what to do. Let me know down in the comments section. Right. Um, obviously, I'm going to continue to use that off camera. If my opinion on it changes drastically, I will let you know in a forthcoming film. In the meantime, I'm loving it. Oh, and today's... Um, primer. I finally finished this Becca First Light Priming Filter mini mini version that I've got. Now I only have the midi version to work on. I really like this. I'm gutted that Becca has gone because this, this is such a nice, nice primer. Um, thankfully there seem to be quite a lot of them on Depop at the moment, quite cheap, so I may pick up another couple of those just to... I don't normally keep more than one backup of something, but where Becca doesn't exist anymore, and I really like that formula. Um, and it's got a 12 month once you open it. So you have time to finish it up, or at least I have time to finish it up, so yay. Right, enough of my waffling. If you're one of my 4F babies, please check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people, but they are leaving me in your newsfeed, which is making it very difficult for people to tell they've been deleted. Um, it's also worth double checking your notification status while you're doing that, because mine I've noticed keep getting knocked back to um, personalised rather than all which means that I don't actually get any that's better I don't actually get any notifications at all on my account and I've tried everything to get them to come through but it appears YouTube is not my friend right now um, hmm once you've done that, do let me know in the comments section, do you have this palette? Do you like it? Having seen me use it, are you now tempted to buy it? Because I know a lot of, um, 
I get a lot of people say, I wasn't really interested in the palette until you did that look. And now I'm like, oh, I really quite want that myself. So I'm sorry if that has given you the I want. Um, seeing as how Moonspell 1 was limited edition and is not coming back, if you like this one, jump on it quick. Um, because otherwise if it sells out, and I don't know how many restocks he's going to do on this one, uh, if it does sell out, you're going to be left looking on Depop, Macari, Poshmark, whatever selling site you use in your country, <clears throat> to try and find one. If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome, hope you've enjoyed it here. Um, this is a pretty good indication of what you get from my channel, really. Um, I blether on about all kinds of everything, sometimes it's interesting, sometimes it's not, but apparently my voice is very soothing, so it doesn't really matter what I talk about, people just like listening. That being said, if you enjoyed this and you'd like to watch, listen, subject yourself to some more of these, uh, there's a super, super easy way to do it. What you do is you hit that red subscribe button. Then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually send you some. In the meantime, as well as a rather ample backside, I have a rather ample back catalogue of films that you can look through. Uh, I've got all kinds of things, they're all in playlists. Um, I've got other product reviews and makeup tutorials, I've got challenges, collabs, tag films, my Zodiac series that I really must re-pick up and continue because I kind of stalled at Aries which is... I think I just don't want to do my style sign in case I don't like the look that I come up with. <coughs> How pathetic is that? <clears throat> um, I also tell you my favourite joke. No, poem in one of them. My brain is waltzing out the door without me, apparently. Which is just... really marvellous. So basically, if you're looking for a little bit of me time, I've said it for a long time now, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, settle down with your coffee and your custard cream, or your, your cup of tea and your toffee crisp bar. And just indulge in watching me usually apply coloured pigments to various parts of my face, but always, always with a calming, soothing voice. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.